man this is definitely going to be an interesting video because honestly i am not even quite sure what percentage of the youtube population is even aware that the show we are about to discuss even exist and don't get me wrong i definitely see the vision of what warner brothers japan was going for here i have mentioned many a times throughout the lifetime of this channel that as someone who i would consider is a pretty seasoned anime watcher at this point and for someone who has watched and witnessed firsthand the uptick in popularity that came with the genre when audiences here in the West found out what Demon Slayer and JJK was. Not to mention the epic grip the last season and couple of movies Attack on Titan had on the world. Rip Aaron Yeager. So like I said, I definitely saw the vision of what Warner Brothers Japan was cooking. So getting back to how I mentioned before of how unfortunate of a problem it could be for a studio if no one knows what I'm talking about because that kind of means that the outcome of a show such as the Suicide Squad Isekai can only really go one of three ways if you look at it from an audience's point of view. So let's look at a couple of them. One, at the end of the day, this is an Isekai marketed towards a Western audience that more than likely doesn't even know what an Isekai means, aka since there was no real demand for such a show, your show ends up in the shitter. Two, because of the oversaturation of actual good anime coming out of Japan for the people such as myself each and every season, and the big uptick in popularity for the casuals that are just getting into the genre, therefore meaning there are simply too much anime to watch to even sweat an anime such as this, again, meaning your show is in the shitter, or three, and what is more than likely the most realistic reason, the marketing for your show was just shit, and we're still in the shitter because of that. Or I guess there is a fourth option where I could just be a bloke and actually everybody is watching this show. Casuals and anime connoisseurs alike. <laughs> Man, yeah, this is a market where it's hard to get people to even take a show like Invincible seriously. A show that is more than likely a top five show in terms of quality of the 2020s. But I feel like you are starting to see my point. Just like with the majority of some of the flops, even on the scale of some of the most big budget Hollywood adaptations made for the small screen in most recent memory, the real issue is that the show's premise as a whole isn't even that bad. Again, it's kind of the execution, but you can see where the idea itself has some legs. But again, as we have seen on many occasions up to this point as an audience, when you don't market your idea properly, or you don't market your idea to the proper audience, or shit, even if you don't know if your idea has a marketable and receptive audience in the oversaturated entertainment landscape that we live in today, you kind of find your show in the sunken place of TV show Limbo, a show where there is no word of mouth, no group chat conversations, or no water cooler discussions because there wasn't that initial targeted anime audience member to bring us all up to speed. There is no FOMO or fear of missing out from a casual's point of view, like with animes like Demon Slayer or JJK, because this anime wasn't even on their radar. So what you now have is a show that has dropped three episodes out of its 10 episode lifespan in its debut week, and only finds itself six out of 10 on the trending chart of your particular platform. It's easy to say how this is not a good look. And while my yapping might make it seem like I don't see the vision, or like I haven't enjoyed myself in the first couple episodes, that is not the case at all, and I would still definitely recommend it for anyone who is familiar with the genre of isekai or the IP involved. Because if there is one thing that I can give the people of this idea credit for, they really went for it when it came to the animation studio that is behind this project, and my god did they really go for it when it came to the casting choices, I guess this is kind of a good place to say that I watch anime in Japanese or subbed, so therefore I also watch this show in subbed. Oh god. Wait, I actually just felt like half of my audience retention fall into a bottomless pit. I'm just saying that now I'm actually going to start talking about the Suicide Squad Isekai as a whole. No spoilers or anything. I just felt like that was a good time to get that out of the way before you pretty much have no idea what I'm talking about. Because one of the reasons that I say that the people behind this project really went for it, for those who don't know or are even unaware of this studio overall, the Suicide Squad Isekai is animated by Wit Studio. Just like that, I know that the seasoned anime watchers of my channel have already clicked the pieces together in their own heads. And don't get me wrong, for those who are not, 
This is coming from a studio that has animated some of the most popular new gen anime such as Spy Family, Season 1 of Vinland Saga, before being poached by MAPPA, and oh yeah, Seasons 1 through 3 of Attack on Titan, one of, if not the greatest anime all time, at least when it comes to the majority audience, again, before being poached by MAPPA. You, you, yeah, you MAPPA. My point is that Wit Studio is one of the most esteemed and well-known studios that you could ask for when adapting your debut seasonal anime. And with only 10 episodes compared to what most anime seasons would consider the norm of having either 24 or 12 episodes if you're looking at a split season, it holds even greater value towards the Suicide Squad Isekai in regards to budget and time management. And that might not seem like the biggest issue over here in the West, because we have strikes for people that can't even competently do their jobs. But yeah, Japan's labor laws aren't really the same as what we have over here in the West, but that is a whole different conversation for never, because I am an idiot. So with a credible and recognizable studio to helm the animation side of the production, it's pretty easy to say that the second most important aspect of an anime would then be the voice acting, with both audio and visual stimuli working at its max capacity when it comes to the audience, that is the sweet spot when it comes to anime. And while when watching the first couple episodes, I definitely thought to myself I recognized a voice or two, I did not expect to find out what I found out while doing my research for this video. I don't want to yap too much because, one, this is about to be a lot of Japanese for myself in this one section, and as I mentioned many times at this point, I am just a bloke. And two, it would be a criminal level of glazing on my part of just the absolute god tier voice casting this show was able to lock down for some reason. And I want to avoid that at all costs because of time. But I mean, seriously. And don't get me wrong, I am only going to mention the most popular characters that these people have voiced. But holy shit, do we have a couple of all-stars on the squad to say the least. I mean, you have Amanda Waller who's voiced by Kujihara who plays Orochimaru from Naruto. You have Anna Nagase who voices Harley, but you probably just know her as Riko Amanai from JJK Season 2. You have Jun Fukuyama as Clayface, better known as Koro Sensei from Assassination Classroom, and fucking anime Jesus Christ Lelouch from Code Geass. You have the Joker who you will recognize as Toji from JJK. Yeah, Riko and Toji are in this show, which is pretty ironic if you have seen season 2 of JJK. But my god, the almighty hitter, the almighty slap of god tier casting when it comes to this show has to be Takahito Koyasu as Peacemaker, better known as whew, Shinsuke from Gintama, Dio Brando from JoJo's, Rosewald from ReZero. Man, that anime slaps so hard and this was the easy one, the one where you'll probably guess it pretty much immediately just from his first line in the show. Zeke Jaeger, better known as the Beast Titan from Attack on Titan. I have no idea how, when, or why such a level of expense, care, and craft was thrown into the making of the Suicide Squad Isekai and what the studio like Warner Brothers Japan even had in mind with trying to accomplish and adapt such an idea. Well, yes, in theory, you would think that more westernized high octane and high action IPs such as DC, Marvel, or even a brand such as Star Wars could find a way to coincide and gel with a more traditional style of anime. I'm just not quite sure if there's really an audience that is big enough to gamble on such an idea that even I myself would consider niche in the first place. While yes, the popularity of anime has dramatically risen over the past couple years, even sparking major studios such as Netflix to hop back into the game of live action anime adaptations, of course to varying degrees of popularity and quality. The fact still remains that for every Demon Slayer, JJK, Attack on Titan, My Hero Academia to an extent, or even live action One Piece, how many people are still sticking with the genre after the seasons of those generational shows end? Just how many people are going out of their way to search for more content of the same variety? Basically what I am asking is what is the size of the audience demand or even audience attention towards this product? In my opinion, it's not very high. And I would definitely say not high enough yet that an anime such as the Suicide Squad Isekai has a chance to stand on its own two feet as a debut anime. 
Unfortunately, it just feels like one of those seasonal animes that will come and go as the new anime of the following season start to roll out. Again, which is unfortunate, and hopefully I'm wrong, because I definitely see the vision of the Suicide Squad Isekai. I guess we'll just have to see how it goes, but don't get me wrong. Hopefully it does get a little bit better than what it is, because as of right now, it is just a generic, generic ass isekai. Of course, as always, I want to thank you guys for watching the video, and if you enjoyed, make sure to hit that like button and subscribe to the channel for more videos like this. I'll leave a link to my Twitter and letterbox in the description in case you guys want to go check that out. Again, I want to thank you guys for watching the video. Make sure to like and subscribe. If you did enjoy, why not click on more while you're at it? Otherwise, that is all the words I got for you today. Bye.